This video is brought to you by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. It's always a good day to wear your samurai armor, isn't it? Hello noble ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and lately I've been surfing the net trying to see what sort of myths people have when they talk or imagine the ninja of feudal Japan. So on this list we've got the top 10 myths about feudal Japan that you thought were true. Or did you? Well let me know in the comments below which of these myths you already know were not true. Myth number four on this list kills me every time I read it, but myths number nine and eight, they might be surprising even for people who are into Japanese history. The ninja didn't exist. Now with this one I need to be a little more specific, meaning that yes, of course, the ninja that used magic or like, I don't know, Naruto, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, yes, they didn't exist. Spoiler alert, no turtles ever became ninja. As I was reading forums and watching videos on YouTube, I noticed that yes, there are people that actually believe that the ninja, meaning the historical ninja, ninja did not exist. The historical ninja existed. The ninja, the historical intelligence of feudal Japan did exist. Now given the name ninja is rather modern, meaning that if you talk about the actual feudal terminology then most likely they would have been called shinobi or shinobi no mono, but still it's the same thing. There were spice, there were espionage, there were intelligence and they absolutely existed. Is this fair to say that many people who imagine the historical ninja still attach things that most likely come from the the mystical ninja to these ninja and think that those are correct. But hopefully with the rest of the myths that we're going to debunk on this video, your picture, your image of the historically accurate ninja will be more correct. The ninja used a dedicated specialized ninja sword called ninja to. Okay, so this one is one of the more nuanced myths, meaning that you find, generally speaking, two kinds of articles on the net. You've got articles that absolutely swear, yes, the ninja used the ninja to. Ninja wouldn't use the regular katana used by samurai. They only used ninja to because it had a straight blade, a square tsuba, it was a little shorter, they could put it on their back, and it was much better suited for ninja work. This, of course, is false, and people who say this have no idea what they're talking about. With that being said, though, I've also found articles that say that the ninja to meaning a sword specifically described as the one I just did with a square tsuba shorter and straight did not exist and in fact it was an invention of a specific movie from the 1960s but such a weapon never existed and this is also false which is why I was saying that this point is rather nuanced a sword described exactly like the ninja to meaning that of course it wouldn't be called ninja to also because that would be stupid what weapon is that let me guess that spy who is trying Trying so hard not to let me know that he's a ninja is actually using a weapon that is called the ninja sword. I mean, come on. So yes, it wasn't called ninja to, but a sword with a square tsuba, a straight blade, and slightly shorter when compared to a katana did exist, and I found this piece of iconography that shows Ashigaru using it. So it was probably a sword used by retainers rather than samurai that was less expensive to make, and some soldiers did use it. So did the ninja to, meaning that specific sword exist? Yes, it did but it wasn't associated necessarily to the ninja. So now the next question is rather obvious. Has it ever happened that a historical ninja, perhaps who was a retainer, did use one of these? The answer is it could be. So it's not completely impossible that it did happen, that a ninja did end up having one of these swords and used it for whatever it was doing. That's possible. We don't have historical reference for it, but it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. What's important to take from this is that even if if a ninja historically did use that kind of sword, it would still not make it a specialized, dedicated ninja sword. Now, if you're enjoying the video so far and the myths we have discussed, I'm sure you're gonna like the next one, and I will share it with you after a brief word from our kind sponsor. Well, today we've got an amazing sponsor. Check this out, we've got boxes from Japan. One from Tokyo Treat and one from Sakurako. Tokyo Treat is a monthly Japanese snack subscription box. You will get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time, like Sakura Pepsi, Japanese Sake Kit Kat and much more. Sakurako is a monthly Japanese snack subscription box. You will receive 20 traditional and authentic artisanal Japanese snack items, including Japanese teas and one special Japanese tableware with your box every month. Sakurako helps in partnering with local Japanese snack makers to continue to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over a hundred years. Also, the boxes of these booklets that explain everything about the snacks you're trying. 
Now what's interesting is that every month these boxes have got a specific special theme. This month the theme for Tokyo Treat is Sugoi Summer. August in Japan means summer holiday. So this month box is full of tasty and limited edition summer themed treats like Chupa Chup Strawberry Cream Soda which was absolutely amazing and Watermelon Seed Ramune Candy. Sakurako theme for this month is Okinawa Retreat. Also Sakurako is partnering with Ogimi Villages in Okinawa. They have the highest life expectancy in the world and we have got snacks with ingredients grown right there, such as Shikuasa Manju and Okinawa Cinnamon Cookie. Okay. Okay, so look at this. <laughs> we've got uh, some soba for later for lunch. Oh, that looks it's a cool. lot of stuff. Well, you should have this for later. Yeah, so we're going to start with Tokyo Treat because that's my favorite, and then we're going to go into Sakurako, which is her that's favorite. That's my favorite. Perfect. It works out perfectly. It works out perfectly. Okay, so we've got a lot of stuff, but I'd like to begin with the Kit Kat, as always, because I mean... we got Cafe Ole ones this time. Very nice. Let's try it. So, Cafe Ole. Mmm. But it really does taste like coffee. I really wanted to try the pandas. You wanted to eat the panda? Yeah. Okay, let's have a panda. How do you say panda? Panda. Oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no need to know Japanese for that one. <laughs> His little face. Well, having panda for breakfast is like my mom asks. Mm. What do you have for breakfast? Panda. Yeah. I think it's uh, <laughs> I think it's Coke flavored. <gasps> oh yeah, it is. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. Oh yeah. Animal's custard. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's like a Coke flavored Coca Cola. I love these things. Flavored thing. Mm. Oh, it's spicy. Not really, but. <laughs> <laughs> This one's a very fancy one. I don't even know what these are, but these look so nice. Okay, let's go get everything out. And this one has like tea and stuff. That's the tea. <gasps> That's the tea. We're gonna have the tea. Really, Sakurako snacks are perfect for tea pairing. Yeah, and this is from Okinawa. Oh yeah, because the whole box is from Okinawa. That's like an right. Okinawan box. Yeah, I, I did read the Okinawa kanji and I was like, Oh look, we got, we got some hashi. Hashi. Now, what's the difference between hashi and hashi? Hashi is the bridge. Yep. Hashi is the bridge. Okinawa. Okay, good. Shikuasa. Okay, shikuasa let's, let's try it. Let's try this shikuasa jelly while I try to open these. Cute. I'll use, it's I'll not... use these. Which the Japanese wouldn't use to eat these, but hey, just being a, uh, mm, little, wow. a little samurai thug. Mmm. Very sugary. Actually. <laughs> That's nice though. Yeah, wow, I was thinking it was gonna be a lot more, yeah. a lot sweeter. Wow. It's nice. Okay. Okay, one each. With a... Buon appetito. Mm. Actually, you know, I've never been to Okinawa, so this is all new for me. Nice. I love it. If you want to enjoy pop Japanese snacks, you can choose Tokyo Treat, but if you want traditional Japanese treats, you can enjoy Sakurako instead. Now make sure to click the link in the description and to take advantage of my special code METATRON to order and try your boxes and get a $5 off your first order. Both my wife and I are really excited, we really like these boxes, so trust me, not only you won't regret it, but you'll also be supporting my channel in doing so. And big thanks to Sakurako and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring my video. Ninja, we're warriors. How many times have you heard the word a ninja warrior? Oh, ninja warriors, ninja, we're warriors. So of course they could do this, this, this and that. Well, here's the thing. This is again one of those that is rather nuanced, meaning that as we say, a ninja or a shinobi is a spy. That's what he is. The category warrior in Japan, which is a very specific category that we usually call bushi, is not necessarily connected to the word ninja. Because when you look at the actual history of the ninja, then we do see that yes, oftentimes many ninja would have belonged to the warrior class, but not because they were ninja, simply because they were already bushi, meaning that many historical ninja would have also been samurai. This is the important thing to take home. Japanese society was structured into what could be considered a pyramidal social status society, which was based on the Confucian Chinese version of society. These are the entries of these social classes. These represent the social class in which you were in. If you lived in Japan, Japan, you had to be one of these, otherwise you will be considered a non-human or an outsider. As you can see, the bushi is a social class, it's a social status. 
it's not a job. Instead, a shinobi is your job. So you could be a bushi or a samurai, not exactly interchangeable, but I'll get to that perhaps on another video, but you could be a samurai and that's your social status, but your job is perhaps, I don't know, you're a gunner, you operate guns, or maybe you're a scout, that's what you do on the battlefield. On the other hand, you could still be a samurai or bushi by social status, but then your job is shinobi, shinobi no mono, is intelligence. In that case, your social class is warrior, and yes, your job is being a ninja. So in that case, yes, this ninja happens to be a warrior, but not all ninja would have been automatically warriors. Perhaps there will be some ninja who didn't even know how to fight because they were expert linguists. So perhaps they were excellent at gaining information, observing, spying, infiltrating. So could some ninja be warriors? Yes, but the concept that if you're a ninja, you're a warrior because you're a ninja warrior is wrong. The ninja wore a black outfit. So the ninja outfit, I've got to say, I freaking love it. I've always liked it. And whenever there is a video game where I'm playing as a fictional ninja, I freaking love it. With that being said, there is no evidence that the ninja wore that specific outfit. Given there is some imagery of some ninja wearing black, but then again, these do not belong to feudal Japan. So most likely these again are a form of fictional ninja, even though a more old style one. With that being said, I mean, colors were all over the place in Japan. They also were symbolic. Right now I'm wearing a black lacquered samurai armor. And that is because a samurai armor would be lacquered all sorts of colors because it protects from rust. But also there was a connection with mysticism and symbolism and the kami, so the Shinto gods, but also your different clans. But a ninja suit would really make you stand out as a ninja immediately. So what's more probable as far as we understand is that the ninja would have been wearing regular clothes such as I don't know, they could disguise as a monk, they could disguise as a trader or maybe a wanderer, sometimes perhaps even a homeless person. And if said ninja were in fact samurai, they could just disguise as samurai. Because I mean, that ninja, for example, Hattori Hanzo, is a samurai, so perfect disguise. In that situation, why the heck would he wear a ninja suit? And this whole ninja outfit situation, again, as much as I like it, it did get quite silly. You really get everything. You got blue ninja, red ninja, white ninja, black ninja. It's really more of a fashion statement, isn't it? Although I have to say, it is pretty classy. All ninjas were assassins. This is another misunderstanding of what the core concept of the core meaning of the word ninja slash shinobi is. Could a ninja technically perform an assassination? Yes, it definitely happened. Does that make every ninja a trained assassin? No. As I was saying before, some ninja were trained in combat, other ninjas wouldn't be. From the information we have, from the scrolls we have, from the mentions we have, ninja were not trained assassins. You shouldn't imagine that there is this school where the ninja learn all the different ways, like I've even read in some articles people saying, oh yes, because a ninja could kill you in 364, then they have these stupid numbers, 364 different ways because they were assassins and they could use anything, like a toilet paper, they could kill you with a toilet paper. I'm sure ninjas were masters of improvisation, particularly very professional ones. There would have been some ninjas that sucked at their job, but I'm saying the best ones, the top tier, the ones that had a lot of experience, the ones that knew and had experience climbing castles and infiltrating and perhaps even doing a lot of high level stuff, like even commando stuff. Absolutely. I mean, people like that, I would imagine that yes, they could kill me with almost anything. With that being said, no, no trained assassins by profession. That's this girl from Tekken. Ninjutsu is a martial art. Ninjutsu is very misunderstood. I think here there is a little bit of a miscommunication and in reality if we really have to be fair about this Ninjutsu has come to have two different meanings. Do we understand it or do we mean it the old way, the ancient way or do we mean it the modern way? Because in the modern day Ninjutsu is basically another martial art like Karate, Judo and whatnot but that martial art is not really that connected to Ninjutsu historical ninjutsu from the feudal period. Because in the feudal period, ninjutsu just meant the art of infiltration, the art of stealth. So it didn't necessarily mean that you would meet in a dojo twice a week to kick the air, punch the air, and learn how to throw and flip people. That would not be the correct interpretation of the word ninjutsu within a feudal Japanese context. As I was saying, if said ninja happened to be a bushi, he would have also been trained in jujutsu, kenjutsu, naginata jutsu, and all the different jutsus and martial arts that a bushi would have been trained at, at the time. So yes, he would have been a martial artist if 
said ninja was a bush again not necessarily every ninja was with that being said it is also important i think when we say that ninjutsu is not a martial art per se that we also understand that in the modern day when we say ninjutsu we really give it a different meaning now so yes if you are practicing ninjutsu today then you are practicing a martial art absolutely the only thing is that it isn't as connected as you would think or you would like to think to the ninjutsu how it was practiced in period pirates were stronger than ninja this one gets me every time where the heck did people get this one i believe it came from this show because they were putting together pitting together like spartans versus romans and they did come out with two video games that i really enjoyed and in these games you can choose the pirate versus the ninja and and it's fine if you're just doing it for silly fun i mean at the end of the day you know it's just for fun it's entertaining and of course it's fun to speculate but i think sometimes people really go too far like i've read people saying things like being really dedicated to prove that oh my gosh a ninja would always kill a pirate because while the pirate is on his ship the ninja can go behind his back and kill him i'm like what the what I would like to tell these people is this is so situational that it really makes zero sense because you could have a ninja who even if he's training combat the pilot notices him and shoots him with a pistol on the other hand yes you could have a ninja who even if he's not trained in combat he might poison the food of said pirate and then the pirate eats but I mean pirate what does even pirate mean is it a European pirate or can it be an Asian pirate because many pirates were there were many pirates operating in that area if you want to know more about those check out this video link in the description the so-called kaizoku in japanese pirate is too vague already ninja is quite vague as we have discussed today but pirate really gets it to a completely what period of a pirate are we talking about so could a ninja defeat a pirate yes could a pirate defeat a ninja yes which one do you think would win yes a ninja could kill you with a finger because they knew the same pressure points that kenshiro from hokuto no ken New. Okay, given I've added the Kenshiro section, but honestly, I see a lot of people believe in this. And when I say a lot, I mean, but I don't know how many people believe this, but I do see a lot of articles that mention this. Oh, the ninja knew the pressure points, and if they apply even a slight pressure to this point that they know in the body you're gonna explode this is fantasy i'm not saying the pressure points don't exist i'm just saying that people in their minds really make it to become a lethal weapon that only a few selected ninja know let's be realistic about it if that were the case and people really knew pressure points to completely block you and paralyze you very easily then they would go win all mma fights they you know just paralyze you and then kick you in the face you don't block you win people don't even realize that you get rich oh no but they wouldn't do it because it's a secret so they only use it for missions and whatnot let's be real about this it's nice to think about these things but a ninja wasn't a magician a ninja wasn't an anime representation of rei from the nanto school even a ninja who was trained in combat if he found himself to have to face three four five samurai in full armor he would run away the ninjas did jobs that the samurai wouldn't do well i think this one we don't need to dwell on this one for too long because i've already explained that many samurai were indeed ninja many ninja were indeed samurai so this idea that a ninja had to do those jobs that weren't nice and a samurai being so honorable wouldn't do it it's it's not true because then again we know that some samurai were ninja and if they were asked to do to perform a certain job even if it was a dirty job even though then again dirty kind of depends on the perspective but because we're talking about what 13th century 14th century i mean i'm sure that their idea of this is fine just do it would not be the same as what we would consider to be okay honorable or acceptable but regardless of that no the samurai did a lot of things that were absolutely horrible and would make you cringe did you know for example that the samurai used to do behead their opponents in order to get prizes because they would bring these heads collect all of these heads and then bring them to their lords but then this became such a complicated thing to do that took so much time that then some feudal lords actually said no nah, never mind heads just bring in the noses unless it's like someone very important and so it is recorded that samurai, samurai cheated and actually went and slaughtered mass slaughtered innocent villagers to cut their noses so that they can bring them to their feudal lord pretend that they were killing ashigaru and enemy bushi and get rewards anyways so if samurai didn't have a problem doing that and we know that it happened i'm pretty sure that they wouldn't have a problem doing any espionage job that doesn't mean that no samurai were ever honorable of course some samurai were honorable some samurai weren't the ninja and the samurai 
I were sworn enemies. I know that from a storytelling point of view, it's always nice to have two separate and very distinct factions. One is the good guys, one is the bad guys, or even if you don't want to do good versus bad, one is blue, one is orange, so I know who is who and everything is nice and clean and neat. And yes, the samurai, they hated the ninja, the ninja hated the samurai, but that's not true. And I've already mentioned this on my video, the eight myths you didn't know about the samurai. So I go a bit more into details into that video. If you want to check it out, you'll find a link in the description below. But just to let you know very briefly and summarize it, ninja and samurai were not sworn enemies. And if they belong to the same clan, they would have been allies. And even if they weren't from the same clan in general, if they really were, sworn enemies then Hattori Anza would have been his own sworn enemy although that does sound quite Buddhist like and very Asian in terms of philosophy. Alright noble ones well I hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please remember thumbs up and if you're not yet members of this community and you don't want to miss all of this fun content become a noble one subscribe to my channel for more content from the method and also don't forget to take advantage of the amazing offer from Sakurako and Tokyo Treat you'll find a link in the description below thank you very much for watching and remember the method one has spread his wings. Goodbye.